Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today, I'm going to listen to and analyze one of Metallica's most iconic songs for the first time. It's strange how, just a few months ago, the Met Club to me was referring to the Metropolitan Opera, and now I'm seeing an entirely different side of culture, and it's enthralling and deep, and I'm thrilled to get to now experience Inter Sandman. So let's get to it. Good girl. I like that kick. Whoa. Oh my god. So many people there. This is live in Moscow, 1991. Whoa. I mean, they have to have lines of, of guards there, I'm sure, just to make sure it, it doesn't turn into a huge smush. Wow. That is so many people. Also, the groove of this is really good. Like the kicks in there, I just... Yeah, it's got a great groove and a great um a great riff that's repeating over and over. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm not gonna go back to the beginning just yet. We're gonna keep going from here. Oh my gosh, so many people. It's so interesting to hear a younger James Hetfield. There's a little more uh, pointedness in the aggression of his voice here. It, it makes me wonder, you know, is that something that was difficult to sustain over time? I think <sighs> having that much aggression might be a little rough inside, uh, but it is very direct. And sometimes just younger, younger vocal apparatuses are able to do things which start to wear when we get older. Um, oh, so much directness there. Okay, I'm gonna go back now to the beginning because wow, um, it is, that is a massive crowd. I want to appreciate that once more. And then I was also noticing, it seems like all of the band members have long hair at this point, question mark? Was this part of hair metal at some point? I don't know. I'm still putting together various pieces of metal history. So let me know in the comments if this, inspired hair metal? I don't Anyhow, long hair. It's a thing in metal. Interesting. I was thinking that that riff was really cool, and what what was it about it that made it stuck in my head? I stick in my head, and it's hopping up to a fifth, and then the fifth descends to essentially be an augmented fourth, or diminished fifth, something we'll call. But that diminished slash augmented spot there, that is called a tritone. And it's considered one of the most dissonant sounds in music. So it's really interesting that you hop up to a perfect fifth, which is considered very consonant, and then immediately go down to that tritone, 
which is sometimes called like the devil's uh, interval chord. It's um, it's just really, really dissonant. Interesting that you would, that they would turn this into a rift that just repeats over and over and over. So it starts to feel like maybe that dissonance is normal. Ah, cool. Okay, going back again. Yeah. That kick is so good. Oh my gosh. I feel like the ground they're on must be shaking. There's a few things I want to talk about in here. We're going to go back to his vocal entrance because one of them happens right away. Uh, here is. I think I went too far back. Way too far back. Power techniques are cool though and worth seeing again. always always wondered how it's possible to play instruments not get dizzy and have the hair flinging around like that I know from dancing when my hair flings everywhere it smacks in my eyes and I can't see and I lose my balance so <laughs> to play an instrument at the same time respect man respect There we go. <laughs> I like the offset that he's doing. He does it on everyone and he does it again later. I'll catch it in the later spot. He did it two times. Um, so the offset is the sound that he's making after he stops singing a line. So instead of just to include everyone, it's to include everyone. Nah. Right. And it's essentially a shadow vowel, which you hear a lot of times in Italian singing uh, where you'll say a consonant and then there's a neutral vowel like uh right afterwards or if you're in Italian sometimes it's ah because every single language and culture has a different neutral vowel that is relevant to their particular speech so in this case uh is what a lot of American speakers English speakers go to as their neutral vowel that's a schwa uh 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 right so to include everyone, no. Nah. <laughs> it's cool. He does the shadow vowel and he growls off of it. It's like, he doesn't have an aggressive enough tone quality already. He's gonna add more aggression and growl at the end. <laughs> That was the other spot, by the way, where he does it again. One more time right there. <laughs> I feel like going with this whole Sandman idea, 
Uh, and I've read the lyrics ahead of time. This is uh, important to me to do a little bit of background research before I do any sort of analysis of a song. So uh, we have various nightmares that are popping out in this song. It's a Sandman. Of course, a Sandman comes to help put you to sleep in various folklores. So I feel like every time it is the nah, it's like a nightmare jumping out or some sort of creature jumping out from underneath the bed. Yeah, maybe reading too deep. One more time and then we'll keep going. Interesting backing Huh. Something about the backing vocals actually disturbed me a little bit in there. I wonder if I'm catching a little bit of edge of the twofold on that one. I know it's hard to hear, to tell for sure, um, but these two voices sound like they have a slightly different way of bringing the distortion on. So it's interesting to hear essentially uh, different textures of distortion together. I don't know. I mean that it might just be that it's in different pitch centers too. And so we're getting maybe some different breath pressures, which are creating slightly different feelings of the distortion there. I'm really curious. Yeah, interesting. I really dig all of the interesting cultural references in here. We had Never Neverland now. We had the Sandman earlier. It's it's fun. There's a lot of child references. And I'd read that he'd originally written this about SIDS, uh, which is terrifying as a new parent, sudden infant death syndrome, that essentially your baby goes to sleep and just doesn't wake up. It's like one of the most terrifying things. And it's difficult, again, as a new parent to not just walk over to the baby's crib every 15 minutes while they're sleeping and listen to hear if they're breathing. So anyhow, um, <laughs> it's, it's almost strange how this has an upbeat feel to it, knowing that that was where the song had first started to originate from, but it has lots of children's references in it too, which goes back to that. And oh, what a strange dichotomy. Yeah. Okay. We're going to keep going. Such a cool rip. One of the things that's most impressive about James Hetfield's sound is the way that there is a constant force that is being pressed upon your ears. It is always present. It is a wave of aggression. It feels like a consistent stream. It's like almost like, it's like when you get those hoses and you put the nozzles on them where it's this pressure stream that is just able to clean any wall off. That's his sound. It's like a hose got this pressure nozzle and it's got that aggression the whole time. It's never going to stop. That wave is, feels like it's relentless and he has great support to make it happen. I have to say, I hear just a whole body being used. At times I look at his posture and I go, mm, you could be more upright. But <laughs> that's to like have your ideal 
sound creation ability. He doesn't actually need that. I think that sometimes he's also bending over with guitar and movement on stage. I've always seen him having a fairly wide stance, though, that has what I would call like very uh, grounded posture. And he's able to use that lower support to keep this intense, aggressive, relentless sound going the whole time. Let me go back a little bit. Man, hearing this, them sing together is just, there's something about it that, that grates on me a little bit. I don't know what it is. I'm trying to analyze it more and figure out why. I might be stumped by that one. keep laughing a little bit inside because I'd read that the this exit light or eggs exit light yeah exit light is one of the most misheard lyrics of all time or something along those lines that apparently it's something about eggs and light <laughs> I I can hear that because he's actually phonating a little bit through the X. And X's usually don't have phonation. It's considered a KS sound. But probably because he has that intense stream of sound coming forth the whole time, we're getting a little bit of phonation underneath the X. So it almost makes it sound like instead of a KS, we have a GS. By the way, um, these are this is a great example of a consonant pair where you have one that's phonated and one that's not phonated. Phonated means that the two vocal folds make a sound, a pitch underneath. And not phonated would be, there's no pitch underneath, it's just air. And so a K and a G, K, G, K, G. The difference essentially is whether or not we have a phonation. P and B are another example of a consonant pairing like that. P, B. Same mouth movement, same articulators essentially, just is the difference of whether or not we have phonation happening. So I hear what sounds like a little bit of phonation on the edge in there. And I understand now why people would think eggs instead of exit. <laughs> really interesting. I'm gonna go back one more time. That one he did better. I think there was one in there that he did a little more phonation in, um, but I'm not gonna go back and catch it right now, but you can go back and see if maybe you hear just a tiny bit of lingering phonation instead of just a K that goes into a G at some point. I wonder if that's where the mishearing of that lyric comes from. Okay, we're gonna go back. I don't know if that's done, but this guitar solo is super, super cool. Oh!
I feel like it's always going, wow, 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 wow. And that's how I feel inside too. Like, whoa, this is a really cool guitar solo. Slide in the distortion. <laughs> Man, I love the way he's playing with pitch pins in there and distortion and then he adds in some like really spicy moments too. Oh, there's so much fun and uh, delight. It just, he never lets down. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. So good. I think that 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 those spoken parts sounded like they were already in the backing track, I want to say. Really interesting, but I, the lyrics, I think, are taken from Hansel and Gretel. There's this beautiful prayer in the opera that um, now I lay me down to sleep. I think that's where they're taken from. Maybe that's just where I know it from <laughs> because opera nerd. I'm not sure, but uh, it's a really sweet moment. Um, anyhow, I, I'm curious if that was something that they had in the backing track already or if there's some people... Uh, elsewhere that I'm not seeing that are speaking. There's something about the distortion in James Hetfield's voice that sounds like a distortion of guitar to me. I've listened to that before and noted it before. I think that might be one of the reasons why his voice is just so successful in this mix. Um, the heaviness of it and the way that you start getting distortion in his sound has a complementary effect to guitar in this setting. I like the way he has this stylistic, uh, I would say frequent stylistic accent that he does, where he re-attacks a note and essentially makes it a little holler on it. Hey, hey, essentially is what he's doing. You can create that um, partly here by re-attacking something, but it also you can kind of rub it by making your diaphragm bounce a little bit. It's cool. He might be doing a little bit of both, I think. That's a very good chaos, by the way. <laughs> Man, duh. And there is that shadow vowel again. Oh, is that the end? Oh. Oh no, it keeps going. <laughs> no. 
Again, a shadow vowel. <laughs> wow, that evil laugh. It was a combination of that reattacking and that shadow vowel, right, and that offset. And then the way he does shows a lot of teeth in it. It sounds so evil at the same time. Well, that makes me think of the Sandman um, series that recently came out, the television series. It has like undertones of uh, super scary sometimes. <laughs> So slimy. <laughs> it's like it's like an evil Pez dispenser. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That performance has so much energy in it from the crowd, that massive crowd. I think they must have created an earthquake with all of their jumping. And then obviously the band can feel that and is channeling it back into them. That's a great, great dynamic. And then it's fascinating to me to get to understand James Hetfield more, where he's come from, and start to understand a little bit about what makes him such a great metal vocalist. Wow, that relentless aggressive sound is incredible. And I'm also loving getting to analyze how these intervals have been constructed to create riffs that are legendary, iconic, etc. If you want to hear more analysis of Metallica, you can check that out in this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day. Thanks.